the most important reason that people keep coming back are the relationships. It's not a networking thing. That's just, to me, cliche, and it's kind of obnoxious. It's building friendships. Welcome to Germano Studios, the hit factory in New York City. I am Troy Germano, owner of the studios. We are presently sitting in Studio One, which is our main tracking room here at the facility. Uh, formerly, I own and ran the hit factory from 1981 to 2003 in New York, London, and Miami. And now we have a joint branding situation here with the Germano Studios name that started in 2007 and the Hit Factory, which started in 1975 with my father. So the concept behind Germano Studios back in 2007 was to open up a facility that was multi-genre. That's kind of what we have achieved here, which is what made the Hit Factory very successful. I think a lot of times recording studios tend to focus on one thing. They're a rock studio or they're a rap studio, and I think that doesn't help the engineering. I think it's important in, to develop engineers that you have to be working on different varieties of music on a daily basis with different people, different cultures, and I think that's what actually turns the guys that work for me into incredible engineers. It's, it's really here more of a loft kind of downtown artist painters mentality. And ironically, it's in the building that Keith Herring had his studio, which is now his foundation on the fifth floor. And when I walked in here, there was something magical, even with the elevator being a little bit like a backstage room at CBGB's, that kind of a vibe, with all the, you know, the band stickers on the ceiling. And as funky as that was, it kind of also made me feel like it was like, like, a, like a Japanese bar, like a private bar. And that's something that attracted me to the building. And, you know, once you get through the door, is try to build a paradise, something that a musician, a producer, a writer, an artist, a band's gonna come in and get motivated and wanna make records here. In terms of Studio One and Studio Two, the difference is Studio One is a tracking mixing room. Studio Two is a mixing overdub room. In today's world, when we're making pop, hip hop, rap, and trap records, a lot of the writing sessions that come in actually are like tracking sessions for the Rolling Stones or for Joan Jett. That ability for clients to be able to sway back and forth from Studio One to Studio Two really makes life very easy, especially from a Pro Tools point of view in terms of track counts and the identicalness of both systems. That's a big part of why the consoles are the same. The real character differences are the outboard gear, and I think the outboard gear pound for pound in these studios is untouchable. Studio One is not the largest room, but pound for pound as a middleweight fighter would knock out any heavyweight, and that's the way it was designed, and that was the intention, knowing you know what bands would be in here and what artists would be in here on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. In terms of the engineers here, I've really kind of kept the staff small. It's less than 10 people, very different than having 130 people at the original hit factories. And the idea here is to really help these guys become producers and mixers, potentially songwriter mixers. And it's a real emphasis on developing and getting them involved in all the sessions besides just being assistant engineers. And I think I've been really successful at that, especially Matthew and uh, Jason. They've been here now a number of years and they're developing exactly like an athlete would develop on a team, getting more time on the field, on the ice, on the court, whatever it may be. We love the Sennheiser MKH-800. It's a microphone that came in here when we were recording fixes on Hello Dolly, the Bette Midler play that was on Broadway a couple years ago. This is a microphone that just has incredible versatility and uh, our engineers were thrilled to have multiple pieces of that here on a daily basis available, not just for Hello Dolly, but for every other record that we make here. Of the 100 records that we've done that are either gold or platinum, 
the one that people stare at in that hallway more than anything else is Kanye West's Yeezus album. That seems to be a record in terms of the hip hop world that will probably go down in history as maybe a Sgt. Pepper type record of that genre of music. You know, as people come in, they're younger, I'm now getting much older than a lot of the clients that walk in the door. So it's, it's interesting to see what they like and what has an impact on their life. And that's a record I think that probably is in our top 10 of uh, records that we've worked on a piece of. I think the music industry and the recording industry has changed because of the way you can make records. And unfortunately, there are a lot of engineers that come in that are really good at making records today, but they haven't had the experience of being in rooms that are large with isolation booths and understanding microphone and microphone techniques. That being said, there's still a lot of people that come in that are legendary that they learn from every single day. You need to be able to understand how to make those records. And I think that changes as time goes by. That's something in the music industry that's lost. One thing that always perturbs me a little bit in today's world is everybody's building a studio at home. These are not studios. People, please understand. These are production rooms at home. They are not recording studios. Recording studios are Abbey Road, Capitol, Record Plant. But it's great that it's not like having to have a Studer A800 or A27 or a Sony 3348HR in your home. I am not anti-DAW in any way, shape, or form. I think it's the merging of the technologies of analog and digital that have made this a machine that's very efficiently run. The most important reason that people keep coming back are the relationships. The relationships that I've created and the relationships the engineers are making every single day. It's not a networking thing. That's just, to me, cliche and it's kind of obnoxious. It's building friendships. I mean, you have to build friendships. If you don't build friendships and, you know, these studios are not inexpensive, there's no doubt about that, but I help my friends. I think advice to young engineers and even older engineers is, you can't let the technology pass you by. You need to evolve, and that's something that we do here on a daily basis, not just as engineers, but as technicians and as owners. It's an ecosystem that needs to be watched and maintained, and um, I, I hope I play a small role in doing that and helping these engineers grow, and most importantly, making great music. And the records on the wall are fun. It's, a, it's an achievement, but it doesn't really mean anything. You only judge by as good as your last session. It's like any other business. What I'm most passionate about now is my speakers that I have a joint venture with APS Audio in Poland. We decided to get involved in building a pair of speakers simply because there's so many different personal choices that people bring in and we've kind of narrowed it down to a few things. They're um, Germano Acoustics, APS Aeon 2s and we're pretty proud of it. It's, it's fun, that's something I'm passionate about. So in terms of the clientele that I've been here over the years, I would say if I had a pick one person that was most influential in helping me attract people here, and just a great guy all the way around, will be Steve Jordan. Steve Jordan has probably brought me some of my greatest clients here, and without his help, it would have been really difficult. He's really been, you know, a friend and uh, somebody I could count on to, to, to turn these engineers on to really great music. It's because of him Keith Richards has spent a tremendous amount of time here. And now the Rolling Stones. He's worked on great things here, and uh, I wish there were more people like Steve Jordan. This spring, we've been working on the Rolling Stones, Ellie Goulding, and later today, John Bon Jovi will begin working uh, more on the new Bon Jovi album that he's been working on in both studios during the course of the last few months. <laughs>